Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. OGs turn to ban. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. OGs <laughs> turn to ban. Jeez, turn to pick. I speak for the trees. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, jeez, turn to pick. Are so underlord? Dire team pick. Earth spirit. OGs turn to bad. Enchantress. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. No. Dire team ban. that but we are into our first game of the day for dota pit we are here with og versus mid mid or feed here it is the win bracket final we have of course this now underway into the draw. oh i'm actually seconds remaining that's why it took me a second my how are you buddy five seconds i'm doing very well how are you mutt tired it's a little bit early but uh we got a lot of casting ahead of us today yeah. and Jeez, none more exciting i think bad. than this game in this series i think you got to see mid or feed yesterday um in the one series where they played against mouse sports yeah, that's right. They must have done pretty well, because here they are, going up against OG in the one final. So, obviously, they added Cinder and What do you think about this new squad, or rather the squad Ten from Mid seconds remaining. They looked pretty good yesterday. Um, they had a pretty big comeback against Mouse's Alchemist in the very first game. But um, they're a team that looks like they have a solid idea of what they want to do in each game. And uh, they have a bunch of these pretty dangerous picks, like the Enchantress at their disposal as well, so... You know, this is definitely the team you want to go up against to test how good you really are, right, OG? These guys are not a new team. These guys have been around forever. Yeah, they've got their pretty much core squad still here, but they added Resolution, which is, Five I think, remaining. one of the best carry players in terms of uh, Dota 2. Play, and he's done very well so far. OG, they've lost a couple of games here and there. They've had a couple of rough series for sure. They're still finding their footing. But you can say that about most of these teams, middle pick. feed included. But they will get the Earth Spirit more than likely for Jerax, which is going to be very exciting. And the Underlord comes out, which I haven't seen too much of, Bragg. Yeah, the Underlord's actually getting a lot more popular. Um, he's especially good against the way Furion likes to play Dota. Later on in the game, he can kind of counteract the split push aspect by being able to, you know, clear waves and then Rally Rift or Dark Rift. Is that what it's called? Dark Rift? Dark Rift, that's it. You okay, it, Dark Rift. The taxi move back to lanes and he can throw around the game that way. To call it that, the taxi move. That's what it is, essentially. It's a great move, but I actually... 
this hero just seems really strong. I haven't seen him that much, but I'm excited to see what he could do in the game. We have a couple more bands coming out. The Monkey King band we saw a lot of yesterday. See the Alk band on the other side from Interfeed against uh, OG. Not a surprise there. They've been, uh, I think both teams have been experimenting, obviously with Cinderin on the squad as well. But uh, what are you expecting with these next couple? Um, I'm expecting to see something pretty big here. We have both supports and the offlane picked for OG, so their next pick is really going to reveal a lot of what their lineup's all about. And uh, I feel like mid or feed kind of just want to keep it pretty flexible at the moment. Furion, typically the offlaner, but he can also play in that safe lane role if they do want to play more of an aggressive lane with the support enchantress or perhaps even the core enchantress, which... I mean, I never rule it out anymore because sometimes it just happens and you sit there and wonder how this here is going to work out and it just does sometimes because it's just unkillable. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. You have to get some of that, like, that burst potential or Ursa is obviously a very good hero. You can get up on the enchant. And the core role, she's pretty strong. We've seen a lot of teams play her recently in the core role, Ice Ice Ice. But like you talked about, there's a nature's profit, so it kind of makes things a bit muddied for mid or feed in terms of what they want to do. But we talked about this hero a lot remaining. yesterday. I think I touched on it, the Bane. This is here I'm excited to see more of. Five He's got the best ass in the game. You called him a bully, and I think that's exactly what he is. Yeah, definitely has been rising in popularity for sure. This is like the strongest early game five here in the game, right? Nobody fights this guy. Yeah, he, he's got everything. He's got all the stats. He's got brain sap to work with. It's hard to trade against him. In fact, almost impossible in certain circumstances. He could set up for spells like Arrow or Impale if they were to go down that route and pick up a Marana. But we'll see. They're, again, they're going to keep it pretty flexible. For OG, we already know both supports, Crystal Maiden and Earth Spirit, Underlord, going to be in that core position, probably in the offlane. And now we're just waiting on what they want to play with Resolution and No-Tail. See what's going to be the next choice. Although, S4 has been doing some interesting shenanigans as well. So there's a couple of options here. Yeah, definitely. I feel like if they don't pick a safe lane carry that's strong against the Furion and lane naturally, like the Sven, that they could have a potential problem in the safe lane with... Um... Nature's Prophet, Bane, and then Enchantress, of course, the Enchantress Pressure. Alright, so Queen of Pain for the mid lane. Because, um, so the Furion's already pretty decent against these two support heroes on OG already. They don't have that much kill pressure on him, and they don't really handle the Treants very well. So he can kind of take over the lane that way, and then, of course, with any heroes rotating in, um, all of a sudden the safe lane does, you know, becomes not so safe anymore. It, it, it is a lot of pressure, it's true. I'm excited how they utilize this enchantment. See if they, they put it in that support role, but we'll see. They have still plenty of time to think about it. Two minutes left will it be the Kezu Furion. Who's gonna, who's, what are they going to grab for cancel? These are all questions we still have to have. They actually have so much reserve time. They're actually taking like no time to pick up their heroes. This is like their first time they've actually thought about what they want to grab in terms of 10 or 20 seconds. Yeah, we got the speed draft going on here. Which I'm fine with. I'm fine with having a speed draft. A lot of Dota to get to today, so oh, that is fine. fine. Oh, there he is, the Necrophos. All right, popular guy. He's been picked a lot, and uh, I think he's probably pretty good here, too. He's looking mighty good here. Yeah. It seems a little rough for this, uh, this OG squad. Necro could just heal up. We can get, get that Reaper Scythe, Reaper Scythe out and get some farm that way as well. And what are we missing now? From Again, we could see that Nature's Prophet remain. played in like the, the safe line or something like that with the core Enchantress. But let's just say the Enchantress and Bane are support. What do we grab last from Interfeed? What do they need? I imagine they're just going to try to grab a safe laner that's pretty decent against the Underlord. Um, I'm not too sure of what Tomato's carry pool is at the moment because I haven't seen him play a carry that much. But heroes like uh, the Lifestealer are typically very good against the Underlord. And when you look at their draft, you think, wow, how can they kill this guy? There's no real way to pressure. But of course, there's not really a vehicle yeah. on the side of Minterfeed. So I guess that's the biggest issue there. Maybe Nature's Prophet, uh, but even then, it's not that good, I think. But it's still a pretty good game, though, like you mentioned. It's tough to kill him, tough to bring him down. Yeah, it is a pretty good game for it. All right, so OG were thinking that the safe lane Necro, and they'd play with the uh, a mid carry style hero with the Invoker, and uh, they ban that out. O or Midterfeed responds with the PL ban. Okay. Yeah, PL definitely a big problem hero for them right now with no AOE, really. Yeah, and the Illusion Heroes for OG, I mean, it, it was a pretty common thing. And uh, probably continues to see remaining. if that's going to be the case, if they go for that kind of cheesy last pick. Because they do have fifth pick, after all. Someone like a CK, but obviously yesterday we saw Cancel play the... Played it pretty well as well, I think he... 
well on it. So a good band for sure, just to get that out of the way here for OG. Yeah, definitely. So mid or feed, they do have the option of the safe lane necro, and they could pick a different hero for the mid lane, but Queen of Pain, Earth Spirit, it's pretty difficult to put a carry there for the most part, unless you want to just straight up dual lane with the Bane. They do have options for sure, but uh, I feel like the best, the most optimal setup would just be to pick a safe laner that's pretty decent against the Underlord. And I guess they banned out a bunch of them, so we'll have to see here. Viper, oh, okay. So they are going to go mid Viper, it looks like. Alright, Viper, and that's a tough hero for Queen of Pain and Earth Spirit to really kill, especially if there's any help at all. Man, this fifth pick I feel like is going to have to come together for OG because right now this draft's looking pretty good for mid feed here, Brax. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say that, uh, you know, OG did have some options if they really wanted to switch their lanes around. They could go for, like, the safe lane Underlord against the Furion, and then they could kind of bring out the pseudo aggro tri lane with the Queen of Pain just to free up their lanes and give Underlord a good matchup and perhaps pick one of these uh, dangerous last pick heroes like the Alchemist, but of course, mid feed are no slackers. They banned that out earlier in the draft. Yeah, they banned mm -hmm. that second phase. That's smart, too, because they could... I guess this looks... I mean, Sven is, like, the best laning hero against the Furion they could pick. All right, CK, there we go. Okay, so we mentioned a bit earlier that they did lack in the AoE department. Yeah, and this is one of those heroes that can really take advantage of it when he gets his Phantasm levels. Very strong, can set up some stuff early game to help your supports out. You have the Chaos Bolt, you have the Reality Rift, and, uh... I'm a fan of this hero, but I still think, even though there's not that much uh, AoE damage here, or rather damage to deal with the AoE from it or feed, this is still a pretty good draft for them overall. Yeah, definitely. I like the uh, the CK pick was pretty nice. Um, CK doesn't handle the Furion Trance very well in lane, but he is very good at killing Furion. He's got high movement speed, and he can always initiate the start the fight first. And it sets up the Earth Spirit just to roll in and help secure the kill on that guy, so... Pretty nice. It's one of these lanes that uh, doesn't really deal with the trees very well, of course, but he kills Furion over and over, which is always nice. And how do you feel about the lack of push or, or maybe the push potential between mid or feed or and OG? It seems like mid or feed kind of have an advantage in that. Yeah, definitely. They have the mobility aspect as well with the Enchantress who can just pretty much run freely anywhere. But, um, you know, it's harder for this Ench to run into the safe lane now, especially against that Crystal Maiden. She can always just freeze up the creep, and then she loses a lot of pressure in that lane. However, if they do bring the Bane, that could be a very dead Crystal Maiden if she chooses to Frostbite the Enchantress creep, so... Yeah, um... Mid or Feed's lineup does have the mobility, and, uh, they're grouping up early in the game. It's obviously very, very strong, but... This all depends on how strong Furion's start is in the game, because if he doesn't get off to a pretty decent start, we could just see him not have the uh, same early game effect that we see most Furions have. Alright, we'll see what happens here. Yay! My hotkeys. Alright, we're in. We in there. Hotkeys have been not set up, actually. I think I screwed it up. I think I have to... Nice, nice. Dude, I'm actually... I don't know what's happening to me. I did W... I did back as A instead of... Uh... I'm losing You're off to dude. a great start. Yeah. Today's going to be a fun day, Brax. We got a lot of best of threes to get through. And this one, again, this is, might be the hypest one in terms of uh, winner's finals, OG versus mid or feed. They don't have an icon for mid or feed. They have no picture on their uh, top right corner. What's so, wrong with them? No banner. Come on, man. Get it together, mid or feed. These guys are looking like amateurs. Grubs, indeed. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This sort of uh, this pretty new roster going up against the old standby of OG, one of the best teams of all time in terms of amount of majors they've won the past few years. They've been absolutely incredible. I don't think we need to speak about them too much. I think everybody understands how good OG is. Yeah, if everyone with knows OG, right? Be, yeah, I mean, and with Resolution, arguably, arguably should be a better team than what they've had previously. But we'll see. I mean, Litterfree can easily take this series. Yep, and OG's actually going for the aggro lead here, so the Underlord Furion matchup, pretty good for the Underlord. This one, uh, this uh, bounty rune for no tail. So, three bounty runes. Cancel is the only one that gets it for the Viper. Quite the Viper player himself, and we'll see what he builds into. Starting with a Wraith Band, very fire. He kind of misses his block. That's the problem with Viper. Really slow, has a hard time getting to his block. Whereas Resolution, he got some help from JRX, and he's going to have a pretty good block. Look at where Resolution's lane is going to be here compared to Cancel. Pretty good yep. stuff, although it might push quicker because of Cancel blocking the last two streets. Let's see. Swing of the miss. Jarek is trying to apply the pressure on the cancel. And before boots, Viper can be kind of slow, so it's a good time to do it. 
Yeah, definitely. Very good though. Apply the pressure there, and that miss block actually. This is when it hurts the most when you have Earth Spirit just constantly rolling on you, harassing you. Oh, missed again. Almost could have gotten the courier. Shadow Strike will come out. No points to the corrosive skin yet, but here comes Weeha on the Enchantress Salve. Taken wow. off All right. immediately. Alright. That's, that's not great. <laughs> and in comes the Shockwave Creek oh, to win the mid him. late, right? Where's the uh where's the Ogre Frost Alright, that oh, means he's gonna get a bit nice. old probably. Realize. Alright. Motto and Surrender and they're gonna go ahead and No Tail will be alone for now, but they have some help coming in from Fly as well as JRX for getting back to that top lane. Chaos Bolt will go, two seconds stun, no tell, he's got the Riata, if he'll use it, can they get the Rolling Boulder, are they going to go for it? Looks like Sinnerin might just get away, Death Pulse coming in, he's got Brain Sap, so I don't think Sinnerin is in any real trouble here. So he's going to back up to be fine, it looks like, and Sal as well. Yeah, just making no tell, use a nice big chunk of mana, but now we do have the trial up here. Can they actually, okay, so Necro's still level 1. Oh. Wow, this is a deep dive. Death Pulse coming in. They had the Rolling Boulder. He might still fall here. Tango's coming in. It looks like they can't get the kill. Now No Tail taking the tower hits. He needs to be careful. He's going to salve up, though, and Cinder is going to look for him, but he's going to find that he's back at full health, and No Tail's actually just going to walk right around and shoot Cinder in through the tree line. No Tail should be fine, although Tomato getting low again. Still has the Tango's rolling, but uh, No Tail should get out and even get to the Bounty Room for it as well. Resolution getting harassed heavily by cancel from mid lane. This is where it gets rough. Look at the damage. Down bottom, Weeha's wrapping around the Underlord here with the Centaur group. They might actually can you kill him if they can. Oh, no, oh no. now they Centaur can. Centaur's missed. Yeah, it was close. Good try there from Weeha. He rotated all the way down bottom too for that. You can't quite get it. Yeah, S4 is really tanky, but they do have some kill potential here if they're able to block him up and just to put them down. Underlord is very slow. Atrophy or a level two rain of fire. Firestorm, sorry, not rain of fire. Rain of fire is a movie. Firestorm is the activity. Boulder mid cancel. Gotta get caught. Shadow Strike. Good pushback. Might be in trouble. Resolution's pretty low. Very far to come out. We'll try to turn on resolution. Good usage of the fog. He's gonna blink away. Will he die? He will. The poison gets the job done. But it is gonna be the trade for resolution. Getting the first blood there. Pretty good stuff coming out from OG. Meanwhile, rotating in. That's gonna be Weeha. Maybe he goes for Jerex here. It looks like he's not going to. Alpha, no tail gonna get caught. Death Pulse, did that hit? I'm not sure. Chaos Bolt coming in, but one more auto attack. It's Motto. Dot X God. It's the kill. That's right, the X God himself. But what even is that? Well, I don't know. I don't want to ask him. Good stuff. I've got no idea. Alright, so that's a. Uh, sometimes that happens in Gank, this Viper hero, right? He's so strong and beefy. He may be slow, but he kind of just mans up on you sometimes and kills you. It's tough. I mean, and this is before he has, like, max Corrosive skin. That's when it really gets scary. But, uh, yeah, good job from, I think good job from Jerax to get the kill. You want to try to bring this guy down as many times as you can early on before he's got those abilities, those Corrosive skin levels. Yeah, but this matchup is so difficult for already. I mean, even after uh, Cancel died, he just comes back and asserts his dominance. There's three heroes mid lane, though. Even no Till's making the smoke rotation here. Ooh, DD, Jerax will go for the Rolling Boulder, and he's going to find it, and Cancel will back up wisely. He can still try to go on these heroes. Boulder Strike is going to come through. They have the Real Edirick back along with the one second stun. Ryan isn't available. Not five minutes yet. He might be able to deny himself. He'll try to go in on Resolution and get the kill, but I don't think he'll be able to do so. He does get low with the Corrosive Skin, but Reza will survive. And OG will find yet another pick here on this fight for making this plan a little bit easier for the Queen of Pain. Yep, definitely. Much needed. I mean, Viper sitting at top of the CS charts more than double Queen of Pain CS right now, but... That does mean OG has abandoned this top lane, and right now, CK is in such an awkward spot where he's kind of just roaming around, he has got no boots, rush the bottle, picking up bounty runes, kind of playing that uh, sacrificial role here to empower his team, and uh, both supports from OG are just playing together. And when the supports, with this lane setup actually, it kind of limits where Enchantress can go, right? Um, the best possible thing Ench can do is just harass. He can't really go for these kills against the Crystal Maiden lane, and we see that mid lane is just a tornado running resolution down. I mean, it doesn't get more disgusting than this, right? Viper it's in your face gross. with a tornado. That's pretty rough. Meanwhile, we have, speaking of which, he's been found. Rolling Boulder in. They're going to get the kill. They have the Frostbite along with the Firestorm coming in. It's more than enough to get the kill. So even though we have applying pressure mid lane, he will still go down. And like you mentioned, he just doesn't have many options here. 
No jail in the meantime. Gonna get caught. Brain Snap will come through. They're gonna try to take it down. One second stun onto Tomato. Is it gonna be enough? One or two more auto attacks, but he's gonna bottle up. It's gonna be close. And he will narrowly live 8, 5 HP, 3 oh HP God. after the Orb of Venom takes down. That was super close. And he was so close to ticking down to the hot, uh, heart stop over there, too. That was... Oh my god, I can't believe he lived. Yep, so essentially we have a sacked CK at this point, but he's gonna shrine up, and now he's coming in for the mid gank yet again. He's rotating, no tail likes to be involved, and he's gonna be involved yet again. It's an illusion rune bottom, unfortunately, so they don't find a rune top rune spot. There is a lot of dire vision, though. They see Drax perfectly. So Cancel, he knows he's pretty safe right now. There's even this war's pretty great actually. It's done a lot of work here for Cancel the past. Yeah, definitely. So we've been talking a lot about the Viper mod, and Viper is doing his own thing. Even though he's been ganked twice, he's got two deaths to his name, he's still destroying the mid lane right now. Yeah, oh, They're actually going in mid lane. They yeah. forced the blink out, and they're gonna catch him under tower here. Oh yeah, she's in trouble. Here she will come through. Nature's about to fly. One more auto attack will do it, and she will get dropped by Ken Zolt. It comes back on through, and now the tower. This is where the pressure comes from. Oh, good start from her feed in this mid lane. Wow. Yeah, the heroes on mid feed are so quick to mobilize and just make plays together. And this is their big opening, right? It's pretty difficult for them to push into this Underlord in the bottom lane. He's extremely tanky with the PMS Firestorm. Also does that. And uh, for the most part, there hasn't been a hero top. But no tail is stepping up now. He's gonna get Nightmare again. Uh, no Reapers available, still level 5. He is pretty close. There's Death Pulse, one second stun Reality to try to get him away. There's the Reapers coming. He just got six and they will get the kill. That is beautiful for Tomato. And he uh, almost gets the Seder too. Oh, the Siege Reapers. Whatever. Good stuff. Yeah, so we have a bit of a struggle here from OG in the lane phase right now. S4 is having a wonderful time. He's like, oh my god, I'm finally getting some farm pride over here in the safe lane. But uh, I mean, this off lane is a complete dead zone for OG right now. Nobody can really go up here. And, and it, they've already got a 3k that would lead. The push will commence. And you don't really have a farm hero other than S4. So how worried are you for OG? Can they get back into this game with the CK in the clock? Well, they definitely can, especially once they get some levels and have their abilities online. But... You know, S4's hero is fantastic at uh, thwarting the push here. You can always push back this way with the Firestorm. Yes, that is true. He just comes stop and he doesn't that actually. He's going to have a Hood of Defiance soon as well. The uh, Resolution finally gets some time to farm mid because, of course, the Viper was elsewhere. In fact, they're going to TP bottom with the Viper and the Nation of Prophet and try to apply some pressure now that uh, Mr. Mr. Underlord is gone. So, no tell might need to be careful here. Yeah, very nice. They know he TP top, so of course they're just gonna move to the opposite side of the map here. And poor old No Tail, he's level four, man. At this stage of the game, there's not any hero, like any core hero, who wants to just stand in front of him for him. They all threaten him right now. I mean, he had to go bottle just to stay in that lane top, and even then, he still only has boots and he plug blade and stick. So I mean, at this point for No Tail, it's rough. He's gonna need to get those levels to get back into this game. Like Meanwhile, Jarek's rolling in mid. Cinder and Nightmare will come through. They have no impetus for the enchantress. He's only level 4. Resolution's in with an impetus. They're going to try to fight this Viper Strike is coming. Jerax gets blown away. Tries to go for the TP, but the Viper TP's in perfectly from Cancel. And that will be a nice pick up there. And they got the tier 1 tower bottom too. Oh, nicely done indeed. Alright, so... How do OG actually make a move in this game? Because right now we can see mid or feed. They're just grouping up. Pressuring these towers in the silence. They've already taken two tier 1s pre-10 minutes. And uh, right now, the only strong hero on OG, it looks like, is the Underlord for now. He's got a Hood of Defiance, very straight, uh, very tanky. Tomato's going the same thing, actually. Going into the Hood, it looks like, and going to force him after. So S4, yeah, I mean, he, maybe he's the catalyst for some of these fights. Back, they got the Curry, too. I didn't even notice that, but they did take it down. Enchant coming in onto the Siege Street, but it might get dropped. S4, they don't want to go after him. Instead, fly. Reaper should come through. It will. They even TP in Kezu. They don't need him. They'll continue to chase after S4. He does have the Dark Rift. And again, very tanky, so tough to bring him down. But now they can focus on that tier 1 tower top if they want to. Oh, bottom lane. Kezu rolling boulder from Jerex, but no boulder smash to follow through. And he should be fine. It looks like he'll just dodge into the trees and get out of there. He already has drum and track from Kezu, so he's speedier than you might expect. Yep, he's a race car right now. And, you know, a lot of the times when we see Necro, he comes out so early in the draft that he's playing against a bunch of counters in, like, the Nyx Assassin or Ancient Apparition. This game, there's not really anything. 
looks very good against some of the and, Oh, S4 killing him would be huge. Good Sprout coming from Kezu. Cancel gets the kill, and now the tier one's going to be taken down. So that's your biggest hero on OG getting crushed in mid or feed. Continue to take tower after tower and objective after objective here, Rex. Yep, and they've got the double siege wagons with the trance just running it down the top lane. And oh my god. Yeah, it's going to die so fast. If Underlord is dead, there's absolutely nothing they can do about this push. He's still dead for eight seconds. Drum will go. They'll have the glyph. This will give some time for resolution, albeit just a very small amount of time as he tries to get to the veil. And no tail will pick up treads very soon as well. But even so, S4 will TP back in. A bit of a dangerous TP. Cancel will come up with a couple of auto attacks. Viper Strike back to 10. Good Firestorm. This tower is still taking a little while for them to take down. In fact, it might get denied here. It is now a deny range. They're going to just leave. Bitter Beetle try to TP out. Sinner and Nightmare up. He might be the martyr here. He's going to go for the TP. It's going to be close. Frostbite comes out, and he will, in fact, be the one to fall. It'll take some time, but they will end up taking him down. Great step. Man, he's actually staying alive forever. Space created. In the meantime, they will get another hero out. I think TPing home was Tomato as well. So, again, they only lose that support Bane for that push. And they, of course, don't get the, the, the tower kill. I think it got denied. But Yeah. Actually, no, oh, no. he missed the It died. It died. I thought it got denied. Yep. Oh, my God. Actually, the dire got it. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, OG finally makes something happen. They kill the poor Cinder and Bane. But uh, look at these wards coming out from mid or feed right now. I mean, they see everything that's going on here. Actually, the dark rifting to the bottom lane. Okay, it's a nice play here. You might be able to catch someone off guard, but this unlikely. This be huge. Weeha, not the biggest target. They thought right. would be the best. They're just backing. They know something's up. They know they're not top anymore. Yeah. They know exactly what you do. All right, so that was a little anticlimactic here, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, they come right into the creep wave here. Hey, guys, we're all here. Oh, you all left. Okay, cool. We'll just take the farm now. But yeah, with the Dark Rifts later on in the game, they can deal with this uh, split push coming out from the Furion, so... It'll be good for that. Red, and red. it's still a, uh, it's a 5k gold swing here from Interfeed Mod. It's not great for OG, but... Again, if you, could, if you can outlet this early game here from uh, Midterfeed, maybe things get better for OG, but... It, it feels like the pressure continues to mount here on them, and they there's just more items coming for, for Mid or Feed. They've got a four staff up on Viper. They have the Hooded Defiance up on Tomato. Two sets of drums, in fact, and an Orchid being built by Kezu as well. So these big items are coming out, Rex. Yeah, they are. I just don't see how they're going to be able to deal with these tanky heroes right now. You have the Viper. He picked up his four staff, so he's got some mobility down bottom, actually. We hit the gun. Is he going to die here? He yeah, Magnetron comes out. Good kill. As you TP in, TP from Jerax. They've got, oh, Cinderin was mid animation for the Fiend's Grip, and he couldn't quite get it onto Jerax. So they won't find anybody for that trade, and Weeha will fall. Nice little pickup there from OG. Yeah, you know, that's why people hate Bane right there. They come in, try to cast a spell, and it just it doesn't work out. It takes so long. Is the, what's the, is the animation the same as uh, Nightmare? They go at the same speed? The uh, cast range for Fiend's Group is a tiny bit farther. Uh, I'm not sure okay. if they're the same speed, though. That would make sense then, yeah. It was a good effort, but couldn't quite find it. Yep. Right, so OG, I mean, they got a nice pick off, but they're still kind of on the back foot here. This is where it becomes really difficult for them to farm, right? Because these cores, like the Viper, untouchable. If you happen to commit extremely hard for this, um, mid or feed can easily respond. They can TP it, Faron can port in as well. And there's a good chance that the fight's not going to go so well unless they're able to burst this guy, which looks quite unlikely for now. And the uh, Necrolite, same thing. I mean, he's got the hood. If you don't burst this guy instantly, he's going to go shred and pop the Death Pulse and the Magic Wand, so. Not to mention the Force Step will pretty soon. Yeah. Very close to it, actually. Bottom lane, they're setting up maybe Jerex. Maybe we'll get him set up on. He'll rolling boulder out and away, and it looks like they uh, they just missed him. He'll make it away. All right. This is actually Res Resolution and No-Tail are starting to get some farm. 4K, it was 5K, almost 6K, but it's back to 4K now with advantage here for middle feed. So things are starting to go a little better, but uh, we'll see when middle feed decide to make their next move. It might be right now, so they smoked up. There's three heroes top. He needs some help here. He can't do it alone. And they're going to stay bottom in the meantime for Tomato and Miha. Ezu's farming the jungle. Sinarin's going to walk right in. He needs to be careful. There are three heroes here. Dark Rift coming in. Fiend's Grip's going to come out. They should be able to bring him out. Uh, yeah. Uh, All yeah. right. Taxi service saves everyone on the uh, OG squad. Sinarin, that was a bit ambitious, but I understand what you were going for, buddy. 
it happens. Yep, so, you know, OG, even though they didn't have the best early game, they're coming back. They're making plays here. They took that tier 1 tower, make it out with everyone's life as well. And the pace of the game has kind of slowed down a bit here from mid or field. Yeah, for sure. I felt they would keep the pressure on, but they've just been kind of farming here, Brax. I guess they've, yeah, they've been pushed down a little bit. A little bit. Then they're also picking up their core items here. We have uh, some tanky items coming up. We've got the hood pipe, or sorry, hood and uh, four staff. Viper's taking up too. And, uh, you know, Furion's actually closing in his orchid pretty soon here, but he just put a medallion on his quick buy. He's perhaps just switching it up. Yeah, I could see that working out for him. Getting out of a game type of pressure item. Uh, there is the Midas, by the way, for CK, so no tail knows. He's behind already, and he's going to stay behind, but if this Midas works out, he can easily get into the late game with some decent farm. Yeah, for sure. That's his ticket back into the game, so. Smart of him to pick that up, of course. Um, so, the thing I feel like uh, mid or feet are struggling with right now is their ward game. When you look at their wards, they pretty much have these defensive wards on their side of the map, and that's after they've taken all the tier ones. As when you look at uh, OG, right, you have a ward in their jungle at the top bounty rune, and then you had this other one where Resolution was just standing right now. They had one at that, uh, at that corner right here, scouting out the lane, so... They've been using these division wards oh, the one on the bottom right here. Four staff. He's that might tanky, be a problem. Though. Good boulder smashing. There they go with the TP. Derek, Reaper Sight will come through. They'll secure the kill. A good attempt coming up from OG. Good news is they only lose Derek's fourth. They try to make a play and they force some rotations bottom. Yeah, definitely. That's the key right there, forcing the rotations. I'm sure he knew he wasn't going to be able to get the kill, especially with the hood and the four staff on the uh, Necrolite here. But they're making plays of their own. They're running up here uh, to Keizu. They have the lockdown. Hit of Malice will come through. They have the Frostbite. He's going to go for the TV. He's probably going to get there in time. It's going to be close. He will just miss it. Fly was so close. And Kezu makes it away. My god. And that was the play they tried to make. And it almost worked out. Would have been great if they got that kill. Yep. Nicely done. Look at Wee in the bottom lane. He's got two pets here. Two siege creeps. Oh my god. Yep. And they're coming down to the bottom tower. Right where's, where's the third siege creep? He needs it. It'll come soon maybe. But, uh, that's, the, that's kind of the new meme. Is triple siege creep waves. We talked about it yesterday. It's pretty good. Look yeah, at this good tower. luck defending your towers. Yeah, this thing's dead, man. It's just gonna die. That was before Trance. S4 will come in with Firestorm and kill the, the Trance. Micro? No. Leaving him there. Looking like a Bronze League StarCraft player right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Me too. Actually, I was... You know what? I'm not gonna brag about my, my StarCraft players. <laughs> I void raid every game. I was a cheese player. I was also a cheese player. I couldn't play the macro game, so I'd rush, and if I lost, that would be... Dude, that's, it's always so gratifying because people get so upset. I did some cannon rushes occasionally when I played Protoss. And like they're just like, congrats, you can build cannons. I'm like, thanks. And then, yep. it, oh, it's just great. It's just great. I love StarCraft. It's like a satisfying win. And if I don't win, I'm like, ah, whatever. Yeah. I didn't expect to win. You know, the fact that I did is great. Exactly. That's a bitter feud here. This is how they accelerate the game, definitely. Viper has a double damage picked up. There's Medallion the Medallion. Yeah. yeah. That's the classic DD and DeRoche. Yep, definitely. And, um, so yeah, I was talking about their ward game, and now they finally get a nice deep ward down into OG's jungle. And these are the wards they need to kind of get to that next step in the game, where they can make moves for these tier 2 towers. And, um, they're obviously able to make a move down bottom, because they committed so many heroes up to the top lane, trying to make that play there. But, I mean, the pace of the game for mid or is looking pretty good right now. It is only a 4k gold swing, after having, like, a 6k lead. So, OG is starting to bring it back in the farm department, but when you look at map control... I mean, it's mid or feet all the way, right? They have this Furion, still pushing the side lanes, handling these other heroes in the back while they just run around this four, running down lanes together. So, looks good for them. As you might be in trouble here, they're going to try to push into this with S4. Uh, they were looking for a bit of malice. The tower is getting itself in. The meantime, Resolution continues to farm top lane, so they're actually splitting the map pretty well. But here we go, Dark Rift coming in. They need to kill S4, and I don't think there's any way they can do it. He's gone, and Notail will stay right with them. So, a good attempt to be while top lane. They're going to find Cinderin. Resolution and Jerex combine up to get the kill. This time it works. Yep, nicely done. And I mean, we can see OG's experience coming in hand right now. We see how many heroes they commit bottom lane to just hit that tower safely. They know they can always get out with the taxi service of the Underlord. And uh, Queen of Pain and Earth Spirit, they're just playing together on this side of the map and they can kill any threats. Look at these wards. They're still. I mean, the ward game on uh, OG is still. It feels much more superior. 
than uh, mid or feeds, and I feel like they have the easier time doing these things, especially when they have so much pressure on the map. I mean, this top lane has just been pushed in for the past five or ten minutes here for OG, and there's just been no answer from mid or feed in order to push it back out and try to get something going mid or elsewhere. So it's kind of tough at this point for uh, mid or feed, even with the Aegis. Yeah, it feels like they are having an issue with these lanes right now. Double troll, or troll some. We all thought about it. Double and snare would be sick against the Quap, and now cancels up here. And maybe they can make something happen. Ward placed down in the lane, so Resolution has some decent vision. In fact, he's just going to TP away. He knows this isn't worth it. And so everybody sets up top for mid or feed. It feels like this Aegis isn't really accomplishing anything for mid or feed right now. Yeah, they're struggling to get these lanes out safely because look at the way OG play, right? They always have somebody back and another hero up so they can have kill potential on these side lanes. Earth Spirit's been playing with Queen of Pain for most of this game now, and then Underlord's just been left to his own devices. And uh, they made a nice play there, actually, where they kind of bluffed, came up to that Tier 1 tower, made it look like they were really pushing this with heroes off the map, and then they just Dark Rift out, forced a ton of rotations from Inner Feed, and they're slowing this game down big time. Yeah, for sure. It's looking a bit tough here for Mitter Feed, even though they had a pretty good advantage in the early game. They cannot find any way into these uh, Tier 2 towers, rather the last one uh, mid. We'll see if that continues on. Aegis is going to be down in another uh, 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And in the meantime, OG are going to try to take this bottom tower. And they might be able to. Teeping in at Samato, they could go for a pit of mouse. They're going to dark rip first, try to get the tower, and go for a play. Jump in, resolution. They can't get Tomato. He's too tanky, and they just dark ripped away. Siege creep will do the job, although it is denied by Tomato. But again, still, the tower is taken for OG. Yep, definitely. And I don't mean to make it sound like, um, you know, mid or feet are getting it outskilled or anything. Their late game is extremely good in their tri core lineup, but uh, they're losing their lead that they had on the game, right? These heroes are farming a lot more than they'd like. Oh, Resolution here actually blinks in. He jumped in. in. He's gripped there. There's a ward there as well. A sentry just dropped down. He is mega dead. And finally, they'll get something going for mid or feed. Yep, definitely. That big kill right there is, can probably spiral them to another tier 2 tower, especially in the mid lane. Man, unlucky. He did not expect there to be a sentry or a bane just sitting in the trees waiting he was for him. Sitting there. There. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunate stuff, but... Uh... He will be dropped for 30 seconds. This should lead into a tier 2 push and probably a tier 2 tower taken, although Firestorm is doing a good job of keeping his waves uh, pushed out. Ooh, when yep. he gets back too. Unfortunately, there is no double siege creep hitting this tower, but of course, they have enough power to take this down. No tail though, up top, in some trouble here actually. Enchant, they have double and snare. They need a TP of so they're going to find a reality rift. Cinderin was thinking he would go in the trees. Does Rebel come through? Oh, he doesn't have his dwelling blade anymore. In fact, he's dead. In the meantime, Fly doesn't deny, deny off of the tower, which is pretty insane considering she's a CM. Yeah, a little casual deny. All right. Can they push high ground here is the question, though, Rebel. I feel like they can't, right? This Underlord hero is just going to clear out the creep wave really quickly. It's really hard to walk up into that choke. Up top, resolution blinking aggressively. Fly also pretty far up. Team's group still not available, I believe. Not for another 25 seconds. And, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, it's going to be tough pushing into this uh, Underlord. So they'll have to maybe make a different decision as to what to do next. There's no Roche to take, so I guess you just sit back and farm. They definitely need picks, right? Look at their uh, wards that they have. Well, one of uh, Mid or Feed's wards in the Dire or the Radiant Jungle, sorry, expired. And OG's aware that this ward is online as well, so they're going to probably play around the counter right now. Right there. They have Fiend's Grip ready. They need another hero in here to try to bring down S4. They have the Fiend's Grip to come through. Cancel is on the way as well. They need more damage. Cancel finally in. He can go for the Dark Rift, but there is going to be that huge Reaper Sight from Tomato. And that is the biggest possible kill they could have gotten. 70 seconds without your Underlord. And now I think if you're mid or feed, you have to do something even without Aegis. Yeah, they definitely like to, but look at these lanes right now. OG's pushing in the top lane, pushing in the mid lane. It's going to take them quite a bit of time to actually make it to OG's base right now, so... I don't feel like they have enough time to actually take or hit a tier 3 for very long. Yeah, so even when they lose a hero there, they, they won't lose too much. In the meantime, Resolution getting hit with from Weeha, looking to turn. There's the Shadow Strike. He wants the Hellbear Smasher, the Tomato instead, but he won't find it. It will stay alive. They also pop Phantasm from OG just to try to cut the wave, it looks like, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. Look at this. Look at this illusion yeah, just, just going to work. My god, a no tail. You're crazy. But yeah. Late game on mid or feed, I actually say, I think it's actually better than uh, OG, especially once Necro picks up Radiance and other tanky items like the Shiva's Guard to just stop himself from getting bursted. He's in a good spot for sure. What else are they building? They still haven't built that. No, they have the Orchid now actually for Nature Prophet. 
and he's going to pick the gem next. So they want to give it to uh, Kezu. Then. Extra vision. Up and Cancel has Maelstrom as well too, to help deal with some of these illusions and push out the waves faster. Working on the BKB. And I can't imagine Viper dying once he gets BKB. I already can't see Necro dying at all this game. Probably for not for a long time unless he gets caught out heavily. It, it's really tough. With the amount of damage uh, No Tail's putting out right now, it's just not enough. Even Resolution as well with Veil. They just need more items, I think. Yeah, definitely. But these Morse from OG are so good at delaying the game, right? Queen of Pain can safely split push the top lane pretty much forever. An extremely difficult kill for them. And this uh, Ward in the mid lane essentially does the exact same thing. No Tail went for the... Okay, he got an Illusion Room, but... He's going for the Manta, so we can help split push some of these lanes and just get out of some of these spells. The Atos, of course. There's a couple Atos in this game, actually. One on uh, S4, one on Tomato. I like to sing its praises. It's a good item. We have forced to go back top. The wave push. The gem is finally up, so maybe these boards are going to be taken down a bit easier here as Kezu will come in and just try to check around and see what he can find. Uh, the ward actually in that top lane just died, so and I think Weeha knows, he just saw it. Yep, definitely just saw it. Alright, so yeah, gems picked up, now they can perhaps try to take back some map control here, because OG, I mean, this is their game, right? This is what they have won events off of. And uh, they're smoked up in the mid lane here, looking at Tomato, but he's so tanky, I don't think they want this hero. Weeha is the better option if they can get him. They'll drop a ward down, it was perhaps a little bit late, they couldn't quite jump in anyway. Uh, Kezu... Did he get the gem? He, or rather, the, the ward he did. Nice. So that ward they just placed down is now down. Top lane and OG are going to try to pressure this tier 2 tower. Uh, be careful. See what movement uh, mid or feed make. Mid or feed, they're just they're here in the mid lane right now. They don't care about this top tier 2 tower. Don't no, just use the, uh, oh, this is man oh, the, actually the Phantasm, he okay. Phantasm. Yeah, he, did. he didn't even match up for it, which is very interesting. That makes things a lot more interesting if they decide to push bottom. And I think they're ready. Cancel and the rest of the crew are saying, you know what, it's time, let's go. You might have to deal with Firestorm, it's going to be annoying. Maybe not. I guess they're going top instead as we hog up here. TP's resolution needs to be careful. They need some lockdown. Like, it's clear they've got the Orca. The Ulsa will come in. They need more lockdown. The Reapers is available, and he actually won't get it off in time. They need more vision, and they won't find it. Resolution, that Lincoln Spear, he just purchased it. And instead of going bottom, mid or they try for a kill top, which would have been good, but they couldn't get it. Yep, unfortunately, unable to snag that one. But nice move from Resolution there. Aggressive plays, beating out the TPs here for mid or feed. And like I said, Queen of Pain, so slippery for these heroes to kill. Lincoln Spear and the uh, Jewels has been completed, so. Good luck killing Queen of Pain. But, um, so something they can do against the Firestorm deep push is they can bait it out in the mid lane, and then they can run down, like, to the bottom lane, for example, and then summon trees to just get some chip damage off from the tower. But, of course, it is a tedious process, and they can only get so much damage, and, you know, they don't want to waste their time with that, and they went for the Queen of Pain kill, which, of course, they didn't get. But if they did manage to get that, perhaps we could see them hit some high ground. Yeah, and she wouldn't have had buyback, she just bought her Lickets here, so it might not have been yeah. a bad idea. It's easy for us to say, oh, this happened or that happened, but obviously we have, we're, we're on a mission on this one. We know everything, essentially. That's right. Um, what I do want to ask about, and we talked about this yesterday too, is poison attack affects building for Viper. Is this the, the talent they need to get things a bit uh, more pushed along here, for bit of feed? I feel like it would definitely help, because uh, they are struggling with that high part right there. Good force. Heal, nice hit a Malice. Sonic Wave onto two. They're gonna lose one at the very least. The pipe will get popped. Weeha's in trouble. Tomato is in deep. Freezing Field and OG, they'll finally have their first good fight, although they've lost their X. Atos coming in on the other side. The Orchid will be too little too late to help against Weeha. Now the Dark Rift coming through, and that will keep them alive just fine. So two quick kills. They get out. Obviously, it's against both sports, but it's still a trade. It's still a good trade in favor of uh, OG. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're making plays and they're moving around the map much better than they are right now. And that's especially thanks to the Underlord here. They can take these engagements that uh, perhaps they might not win out in the long run, but of course he can just leave anytime he wants. He's, uh, he's done that numerous times. Now they're looking for a huge target to cancel. He just bought his builder. He's in a lot of trouble. He's got a push down. Now the Phantasm coming in and he's getting blown away. He's going to go down. It looks like they've got the Firestorm and he dies pretty much instantly. Phantasm is used. But that is a huge kill. Dead for 65, and all of a sudden, OG, they're the ones to control here, Brax. Yeah, definitely. Look at this ward place from OG here on top of the uh, Minterfeed Shrine up on the high ground there. You actually have to break the trees before you can place that ward, but this ward is not one that's likely to get dewarded by that gem. Yeah, that's helping out a lot. 
They'll get the tier 2 tower finally. They've been threatening that tier 2 for the past 20 minutes or so. And with it, they can maybe think about taking Roche. It's up. Cancel's dead for 40 seconds with no buyback. However, it could be tough. It doesn't look like they're heading for the Roche pit just yet. No tail. We'll see if they want to go for it. Yeah, I feel like OG don't want to break their uh, split push up on the map, right? Jarex is pushing in the bottom lane. S4 was pushing in the top lane. They just know that they can... They just want to push these lanes in and then play off it like that. Once they push those lanes in, they can make plays where they can actually invade the jungle and look for heroes like Viper. They have wards to help them scout these things out. And, uh, I mean, these guys play a patient game. We've seen it from them multiple times in almost every tournament. This is how they play. This is their... This is their element, this stage of the game. Patriots coming out. CM will get forced away. Nightmare, maybe they can make a go here. They do a Viper back up. They use Mantis style for no tail. They're thinking about fighting. It looks like S4 is just going to steal, rather get the Nightmare stolen as the uh, Illusions come through. So, nicely done. In the meantime, Resolution is farming bottom. And again, that patient play you're talking about. We've seen it so many times in Crusite. How patient they can be when they're just playing in these types of games. And, uh, it's just it's phenomenal yet again. But here we go. Roshan happening. S4, do they want to get in? He does have Dark Rift, but he's got a lot of other spells as well. He's taking some hits, though, from the Impetus. They're still inside Roche. They've got the Solar Crest running. Jump in. Jerax almost puts it out of the high ground. There's the Orchid. They need a bit more damage. Brain Tap will come through. He should live, it looks like. Maybe not. The Soul Burn still stuck in the trees with the Sprout going. And now with him down, he can't make the initiation they would like to have. So they're beat. They'll take Aegis. They'll take Cheese. Now they've got something they need to do here, and that's try to take high ground. Up and the Enchantress is actually doing some serious work here. She actually does so much damage to the Underlord. Very keen fight well with this. Yeah, she's owning. Plus drums. Yeah, so we that, uh, this Roshan timing was quite fortunate. We have so many items being completed up on mid or feed side. Tomato's close to his Radiance now. Cancel just picked up his, uh, uh, Mjolnir pretty recently as well. All the items are starting to come along now. Yeah. So what was looking to be a pretty good uh, couple minutes there for OG, they lose out Roche. Resolution is still split pushing top, but it's just so difficult for them to stop this guy. He's just doing a great job getting up and down the map. Yeah, definitely. The split push game is so strong right now, right? But of course, Roshan is probably the best thing at uh, pressuring these split pushing lineups, right? Once you do Roche, it's like, well, you can't really fight. But uh, at the same time, you don't want to give it up for free, right? So we saw them all in the area. But uh, they're unable to really contest him. I like this play from Cinder down bottom. This is something that probably goes unnoticed a lot of times, but he's placed a ward down bottom, sits here, camps it for about an hour, hoping someone comes at the feed. And uh, all it takes is one of these plays, right? And they can hit high ground. Yeah, I was thinking he might do the same thing top lane. That's where Resolution's made his home. And he's been in the trees pretty frequently. But as of right now, Resolution, he is just constantly keeping this wave pushing. It is insane. And now that they're still tier two, they can't just say, screw it, we'll go bottom and push anyways, because when that happens, the trade inevitably happens for OG. Yep, it's definitely a problem for them right now, getting this lane out, and uh, perhaps, maybe they're just gonna force the issue bottom. You've got all four heroes just running in, but of course, CK is showing his face top lane now as well. Yeah. Once they notice this, perhaps they will back up. Great, if they don't done. back up right now. The CK has a Phantasm at heart. He can destroy this guy. Really. Illusions are already going to work. This is actually a problem. They're going to lose tier 3 damage before they even get any on the tier 3 bottom from it or feed. Alright. Good for OG. And just no so tail is caught up. He's caught way up, in fact. He's ahead of the main problem. Yep, definitely. That's the uh, Hand of Midas coming into play there. Orchid coming out onto Resolution. He can use his Yules and he'll be fine, but. They are going to smoke up. They're going to wrap and try to find no tail. Looks like they saw this uh, rune was taken, though. There's a ward here, so they know something is up. And now they're going to push out bottom together. The team resolution finally comes bottom. This ward will spot him out, but sadly, Cinderin and the crew are not there to, to grab the kill. Man. Yeah, that's just, that situation just looks so unappealing for their feed. Their racks are being pressured slightly, even though it's only like 100 damage. I'm sorry, 250 damage. Um, they can't get to the enemy racks at all. OG's base is so well defended by these three heroes sitting up on the high ground. How can you really dive into this and commit? It's pretty difficult. They also have two force staffs to disengage. At this point, it just seems very difficult. Mitterfee. They've, they've got 1k network lead still. Meanwhile, Resolution Lincoln's here is broken, but they have no way of really stopping him from the blink here. I mean, he's fine, I think. He's just kind of holding out of the blink just in case. So, it will stop resolution in the meantime, but I don't know. It just looks, 
Honestly, the more this game goes on, the more it looks like OG can, can easily take this win. It just feels like OG are out playing them on the map for like the last 30 minutes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Tough for mid or feed, for sure. Indeed, but they do have some big items. I mean, Viper's farming quite well. We talked about Viper's late game yesterday. The uh, plus 20 armor talent that is 25 is quite strong. Yes. And Necro, I mean, this guy's a monster in the late game as well. And Necro pretty well with the Radiance now, especially Fly. He's gonna find Viper. Viper's strike will go. TP actually might keep him out and alive, and it does, it looks like. I think he just, if that auto last auto attack had hit, it would have been a kill, but Frostbite keeping the Viper locked down, and I don't think he could do this. He'd go for the kill. All right, good stuff. Resolution continues to push bottom. In the meantime, Kezu's kind of out and alone here. You will see Jerax. Silence comes out. They miss it. Here comes Resolution. They're looking for this fight. Kezu might be in trouble. They've got the magnetized. The Orchid will come through. And they're going to back up now. They're looking for a Sprout. They can't find it now. Chances for us. They've got the Sprout. They need a Nightmare. It's the Fiend, fiend Script instead, and that will get them the kill. And now Resolution's coming back, and this is a bit dangerous. He blinked aggressively. He used the Yules to try to get Jerax out, but not enough. Meanwhile, bottom lane, though, they're going to find Cancel. That's going to be the Aegis. And they need everybody to get down here, but I don't think he's going to live. Fantastic back up. Cancel might force himself onto the high ground. Four seconds left. Reality right back in with the freezing field as well. And no, or rather, Cancel will surely fall. And even Kezu, he might be in trouble. He needs to be careful. They know that he's here. They're going to oh, look forward to trying to find too. the skill. Yeah, he might lose the year resolution coming in. And yes, Kezu's going to feed his life away. No Tail will find a double, and they're really starting to figure this out. OG starting to find themselves in this 36-minute uh, 30 30 game so far. And just their experience is really coming into to play here. We see these aggressive plays from Jerax. I mean, it looks like he's feeding, but he's not, right? This is the calculated aggressive play to create some space up there. He forces the rotations. They see Viper out down bottom, thanks to that nice uh, Observer Ward up on the high ground. And Underlord actually has a bunch of catch in this game with that Atos pick. Yeah, it's pretty great. Now he's played and guarding Reeves along with the he'll go for Shiva's next. And they're starting to feel comfortable enough to go for this last tier 2 tower. There is a creep wave coming. Mid or feud are set up with an industry on Bane. As far as going to get Atos, needs to be a little careful. Fire Storm, he does again have that Dark Rift. He might want to use it. He's going to creep first and foremost. They sleep up on No Tail. He's got the Mantis style. Jumping in back lines. Resolution going to work. They've got at least the Snare to work with. Dual Sentry will keep him alive for now. He's the one with the gem. And they'll jump away. And I don't know if they go any further. Here comes the Dark Rift. And S4 is just going to get him out of dodge. There's just no way. That's just so quick. He's so tanky. Once he pops it, you're pretty much out of there. There's just not enough burst damage for these heroes. Did they see where they dark rifted to with the observer ward in the bottom lane? I don't think they uh, did. I think no. No, they, they didn't. Yeah, because guys are dead. Yep. So that is a huge play. You dark rift bottom, and all of a sudden, you've got another chance here of pushing in. Maybe the tier 3 this time. Fantastic back to 30. I hope this team's understanding of the uh, Underlord here is quite good. Like, uh, you see all these ballsy plays they've been making, and even setting up for kills on the Furion like that down bottom. And it, just, it just looks good. It feels like, um, it feels like mid or feet have run into this wall, right? We saw them take two Roshans and not really be able to chip high ground at all. Like, all these tier 3 towers are full HP, literally full HP. You can't take it, yeah, single point of damage at all. And the OG are just, they're playing with confidence here. They know how to play this game, and uh, it's very evident in how they move around the map in the mid game, uh, which heroes are playing together. Just, it looks good, Mon. It does. I mean, it's it's. We talk, it, like I think like 20 minutes ago, it was looking a little frightening for Bitterfeet, and now that it's happening, it's looking even rougher. And this was all starting with the No Tail. He had no farm. He just got a Midas. Maybe like 10, 15 minutes into the game. And now he's destroying. He's one of the top network heroes. Resolution is zoned. He's constantly split push top and other lanes as well. And at this point, they're they're in such a good position that they could think about going for another fight here, even up on the high ground with Dark Rift available. Yep. Even though Mitter feeds heroes, they do scale well into the game. There's a hex picked up on Keizu, so they have uh, some more catch now. Even though their 5v5 is extremely strong. I mean, the pace of the game is not favoring them at all. OG are out farming them, they have better wards, and they're just making better plays. Sure. So we'll see how it goes for OG. They are doing everything they can to not only keep this game even, but secure themselves lead as they just have. 5k net worth lead after the last couple of uh, engagements and pushes. I'll look for Tazu, but he's out of there. The Treants will scout out where Jerax is moving to. Alright. 
So I guess it comes down to next Roche for both these teams, one would assume. Yeah, most likely, but good frostbite. Still coming out, no slides and a lot of trouble. Reapers will come through, won't be enough to kill him, but he will still die to catch his tree. So nice little pick there, dead for 48, and this is right around the time when Roche would respawn. Still a minute to left. They're running in though. Dinner is pretty close up. They're gonna have the sonic wave. He might die here. Resolution. They've got the stun, three tickets to the motto. He's in trouble, he gets blown away. No chance for a ghost round, he'll fall. And next is gonna be Kenju on top of it. Double kill for no tail. This might be enough for them to start pushing pretty heavily. Triple kill, he's gonna find an ultra. No tail with Phantasm going to work and absolutely destroying there. My god. All right, so Mott, the uh, we're having some illusion problems there, all right? Radiance is online, Mjolnir's online, but still these illusions have 4,000 HP. It is Jesus. a definite problem. It is a serious problem. He's gonna have Shadow play next. His Manta style was all on, off cooldown that entire time, I believe. Uh, maybe I was put down an illusion, but that's what it looked like anyway. It did look like he had a lot of, had a lot of illusion, but he is just owning at this point. He's useful now. And here we go. They're going to push high ground. We might see some buybacks for us. Fantastic down for 80 seconds, so they need to be careful. Reality Rift now. Weeha. The dive comes through from Resolution. He wants to kill. I don't know if he's going to find it. But it now is coming in. They're being very aggressive if they can with the Dark Rift. And cancel. He's in trouble. Gets forced away. They've got the Atos. He's the chief. He's still about to fall, and he will. No Tails got like Weeha might be next. Diffuse are coming in again. Jump in, scream of pain. Four dead yet again. And with no buyback on cancel, this is looking almost impossible here. Wow, what a turnaround from OG Brad. What a turnaround indeed, Mud. And that's the story of this whole game, it feels like. Midterfeed off to an explosive early game, taking on the tier ones quite early, but then the transition after that was quite awkward. It's not mostly. I would say it's mostly due to OG's good play, right, and the way they utilize their heroes, but this game is still not over yet. They've got the Hex, this might be enough, he's in trouble, they've got the Static Shield on him as well. They'll drop the Panamal Sonic Wave onto two, they'll find one, they'll find the second Tomato. Ghost Rod, no, he'll stay alive, but Kezu, Frostbitten as well as Freezing Shield, he'll drop down, he's dead. Tomato's still trying to fight the Shrine will run, jumping in, good pushback from Derek, and they'll find the Frostbite as well. Silence is there, double kill for Rezo, Weeha, and that is it. GG, game one, going the way of OG after a 42 minute comeback. Yep, OG looked a little shaky in the early game there, but of course, late game and the mid game, this is where they thrive. This is why they are one of the great teams here in Dota Mott, because just look at how 